Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Invin and today what I wanted to bring you guys is a video on Outpost Rush. Now finally this game mode is back in action on the servers and from what I can tell so far for the main part it is working actually pretty well. I've had a lot of fun on it since it's been re-enabled and I hope you guys have as well. Um, you know, there is a couple of little things still going on with a bit of lag and things, but generally it's been a lot, a lot of fun and I have really, really enjoyed it. So what I wanted to bring you guys today was a tips and tricks video on how you can actually get more wins and how you can improve your gameplay when you are in this game mode. Now, some of these tips are going to be more basic. Some of these are going to be a little bit more advanced. So hopefully there's something that every player can take away from this. But if you are one of those very veteran new world pvp players that have played this you know a few times over or indeed you've just played it a lot since it's been released and there's anything that i miss in this video that you think is a really really good tip then be sure to drop it in the comments down below now without further ado let's jump into this one here so the first part i'm going to go over kind of what the game mode is so help us rush is teams versus teams so it's 20 players versus 20 players and they can be from mixed factions mixed companies just whatever however you queue up you can queue up in a group so you can queue up in a group of up to five or you can queue up solo so it's up to you entirely what you do there and essentially if you've ever played any other game that's got a domination style game mode this is it you need to capture your point there's three points so there's a, almost like a, a home base outpost which is the one closest to where you actually spawn initially and then you have a middle outpost as well which is obviously where most of the contested fighting will happen if the lobby is balanced because bear in mind sometimes you'll get overpowered and it will all be at your home base or vice versa so bear that in mind as well but the idea essentially is to capture two or more points to get a point advantage over the enemy team but they've got their own unique twist on this with having things like the Baroness, which is a boss which I'll get onto later in the video, which can freeze the enemy team's score or indeed your own if the enemies capture it. You've got corrupted portals where you can spawn in brutes, corrupted brutes, which will help you fight. And of course, you can spawn in other stuff, use powder kegs, use food, potions and all of the other crazy new world stuff on top of that as well. So that's kind of like the basic premise of what Outpost Rush actually is. So now I'm going to move on to talk about what you should actually be doing. So obviously, like I mentioned there, the game mode is domination. So capping the middle point is clearly going to be very, very important. But you also want to make sure you have your home point too. And of course, you could flank the enemy's home point. Now, this is something I've not seen too many players doing just as of yet. In the last few hours, maybe since I've been playing, I've been playing basically a lot since this was released if you're watching it on the day of recording day of upload it's just come out and i've been sweating it basically playing it a lot and basically one of the best tactics you can do is obviously try and backdoor the enemy team if they're pushing hardcore into the middle or even into your base push around the back into their base cap them force them to rotate back this can be really really good and of course this gives as many points as any of the other objectives so you can go by all means capture their home outpost if you have the power or the capacity to do so by sneaking around the back there. Now, throughout your time in Outpost Rush, you can also collect materials. These materials are things like Azoth or infused ores or wood. And these can be used to upgrade different things around the outpost. Now, one main thing you can do is at your own main base. So the point that you capture closest to your actual spawn point is going to be what I'm going to refer to as your home base or home outpost. And in this one, you are able to build a tower in the middle of the outpost, which will then activate a respawn point inside that outpost now obviously this is good essentially for the respawn itself but relating to the tip that i just gave you guys in the first instance there about backdooring this means that if players do try and backdoor you they will have to destroy this tower first before they're able to capture the point so that's going to give them a little bit more time it's going to give you a little bit more time to react to where the players are and of course hopefully defend that successfully and like i mentioned there, having that little respawn an extra 300 meters closer to that middle point is always always a good thing so i would certainly recommend you do that now at the start of the game the best strategy is to have basically 19 or 18 players running to the middle point with one or two players going for that home point obviously because you want to get the middle one to give yourself that good up front footing off the rip and it's going to be really important to get that dominance going early doors to give yourself a point advantage very rarely do you see a team flank all the way around from their home point to your home point first although now this video is out and that idea is up in the air you may see some people try it but generally speaking, this is going to be your best option as it will allow you to have time to be able to then attack that. And like I said, there you send one or two players to go to the home base and capture that one. And ideally, those players, referring back to the previous point again, would get that respawn point up and ready for you guys. So it's harder for the enemy to backdoor you and you get a respawn closer to get back in the fight at that midpoint as soon as possible. Now, the Baroness boss is super, super important. It freezes the enemy team's score if you kill it or indeed if the enemy team kill it, then it freezes your score 
score. And what this means is regardless of how many points you currently hold, even if you hold all three of the objective outposts, you will get zero points for a certain amount of time after this is captured. Now, I believe it's up to a minute. I'm not entirely 100% social. Don't quote me on that one. But it is a good amount of time that it freezes you out of getting points for. Now, this is really, really good if you are winning because obviously you can gain an even bigger lead over your enemy. But it's even more important if you're losing because if the enemy has two or even three points, you capture the Baroness and you manage to kill her, then you will be able to freeze the enemy's score. You can then rotate round. You can even go for their home base first, then the middle one, then yours or whatever order you guys want to do as a team and capture some of those points back to balance out the fight. And even if you just get one during that time, your points will go up. The enemies won't move. So you'll still be able to get that disparity a little bit closer together. So it's going to be really, really important. I would always rotate to the Baroness with around 30 seconds before she spawns. There is a timer for this in the top right hand corner of your screen. So you can actually see and that's generally just so that you're there in time for the spawn and of course you can clear out and fight with any enemies that are there as well because generally most of the time if you've got a team that are fairly competent or team members that are fairly competent on the enemy team they're also going to be rotating for this as it is a huge huge objective that you need to be making sure you're taking advantage of throughout the entire match. Now doorways on the outposts are one of the best choke points in the entire game obviously other than the entrance to the Baroness this is probably the other major choke point so what you're going to want to do on these doorways is always make sure that you throw down your grav wells, your path of destinies or any other AoE abilities that you do actually have when the enemies try to push through that doorway or indeed if they push out towards you or you're pushing in try and support your guys there with AoE heals etc because this is going to be the biggest choke point once you actually blast through into the middle of the point that's going to be a lot easier for you or for the enemies to run around but in those doorways is a really really tricky point to get through unless of course you utilize the battlements but of course if you are attacking you're trying to get into that outburst you have to go through the doors to do this so it can be very very tricky so make sure you're making the most of your aoes and your stun cc's on those points as you're going to get a ton of damage up and probably get a nice few kills to either stop or indeed be able to get through that push if you're attacking and you manage to kill the enemy defending team there as well now one really really important point is to not overextend similarly to the wars if the team that owns the point you are attacking respawns and they have their respawn tower up so let's say you have your home point and the middle point and you're pushing for their home point if you overextend and go into this base whilst they still have the respawn tower up the respawn timers are only five seconds and the enemies can respawn there almost indefinitely until you destroy that tower and you won't be able to capture the point until you destroy that tower either so pushing past this and not focusing that tower is going to be detrimental so if you do overextend and you choose to do that as a tactical play as a team make sure you focus on the respawn tower if the enemy team has it up which they don't always some people ignore this if they do make sure you get on that early doors so that you aren't losing out as a result of it but equally it's sometimes better to hold your home point and the middle point and then just take the fights in the middle of the map to wipe the enemies especially if you are overpowering them as it doesn't matter if they have one point if you've still got two you're still going to be in the lead particularly if you're gathering things like the baroness like i said before now when you are trying to cap that middle point that mid section if you've contested it you've fought in always try and go inside the walls particularly when you are attacking as this is going to be the best place to fight now Obviously, it makes it much more beneficial for your team. They can drop the AoE heals, the AoE damage. They can help you out. But also, when you're using things like the Warhammer or the Great Axe, you're dropping Grav Wells, Path of Destiny, um, all those other CC abilities that you get with those weapons. You're able to hit a lot more players in close succession. So you are going to be much more effective fighting in a close quarters, enclosed space, rather than running around the outside of the walls. Now, obviously, on top of this, if you are fighting on the point and you manage to kill a couple of the enemies, then you can start to make progression towards this capture point as well. Or if the enemies are attacking, you and you're defending you manage to fight a couple of them kill them then they can't do progress towards their capture as well if you are fighting them on the point whereas if they're kind of sneaking around the back waiting to kill you pick you off one by one and then come in they can start capturing it a lot quicker so it's always more beneficial in my opinion to fight on the site obviously there is scenarios where this isn't possible you will need to go out and fight of course so don't take it as gospel truth the whole time you need to be on the point but generally speaking particularly when you're attacking it is going to be very very good for you if you are ranged and you are defending or attacking so as you get into those walls try and make use of the battlements as well whether you're a healer whether you're a musket player a bow player a mage whatever the case may be sometimes getting up on those walls is really really good including if you've got a great axe throw those grav wells from up the top grab a lot of players in and then jump on them with your abilities you'll do a lot more damage and it's a very very satisfying feeling when you grab five six players in one gravity well in the middle now in outpost rush you'll probably have noticed by now if you've played any of it at all that you are able to summon things now these can be things like the corrupted brutes there can be bears and there can be ghosts the 
corrupted brutes are actually gained through the corrupted portal, which is at the opposite side of the map to where the Baroness spawns, and it's represented by the portal emblem, and it'll have a little Azoth counter underneath it, which is Azoth amount out of 500. Now, generally, this will be zero unless people have contributed towards it, and when you actually put in the 500th Azoth, whichever player puts in the 500th piece, gets a seal where they are then able to summon the brute. The other two are bought from the marketplace, or the armory, I should say, inside of the outpost. Now, these can be summoned at each of the outpost shrines. There's one summoning shrine in the front and the back of every outpost, including the home, the middle, and the enemy's home one. So you can summon them at any outpost, but of course, only one mob can be spawned per summoning shrine, essentially meaning there can be a maximum of six mobs on the map at any one time. And this obviously is for a reduced lag. It makes the gameplay more fair, but of course the Corrupted Brute, by my opinion, again, is probably the best one. It's the most annoying to fight against. It's the biggest pain to actually try and kill. It's got the most HP. It sucks enemies towards it. It does a lot of CC. It throws meatball boulder things into the middle of the point, particularly if you manage to get it on that midpoint. So even when the enemies are attacking, even if they're overpowering you, the mob still helps you. So it's certainly worth having there. So generally speaking, you want to try and get some of those down as soon as you can, as the summons really, really do help you out. Now, a lot of people don't really know about the armory, so touching back onto that quickly, you get Azov from killing the mobs in the area, so these can be attacking mobs, or these can be things like wolves, which you then skin for the infused fur. Either way, you'll get an Azov drop of 25 Azov per kill on those, or the zombies, and then you are able to actually pick that up and use it at the armory to buy things like you would with battle tokens in the war situations. This infused Azov can be used to buy things like food, which gives you a 10% speed buff, which I highly recommend. It's a lot of fun and very, very useful. You can also buy yourself some infused pots, things like powder kegs, like I mentioned before, for if you're going to try and kill the boss or breach the enemy base quicker. Powder kegs are really useful, and a whole host of other things that you can buy, like potions and food, from this armory. Make sure you take advantage of this because it's a huge, huge benefit to your team and yourself. If you do take advantage of this, as a lot of players are kind of ignoring it, just using it for the PvP aspects rather than gathering 50 to 100 as of very, very quickly, which you can do in literally 30 seconds, and then getting food set up for the rest of the game, which I would highly, highly recommend. Now, obviously, you want to try to stay together as much as possible and work as a team. If you do push things as a team, you will be able to win a lot more scenarios, and that is going to get you the win overall in Outpost Rush because it's 20 v 20. If they split up and fragment and you've got 18 players versus their six, nine times out of ten you're winning that fight every single time without even losing a player. So you can by far then overpower the enemy at whichever point you need to go to. They're back on respawn and you can clear out your areas of the map. So make sure you go together whether you're pushing a point, whether you're pushing the Baroness, whether you're pushing a different point or you're just moving around together. Try and stay grouped as it really, really does help. Now that being said, obviously things like flank groups, people who are going on the flank, little support teams going off to other objectives like gathering those resources for the respawn beacon at your home base, gathering Azov for the summoning stuff, that is all really well and good as well, but if you've got, say, a group of 15 that are the main PvP bulk, try and stick together as much as you can, help each other out, and you should see a lot of success in this game mode, and I really like that it does encourage that team player and team cooperation environment, which is really, really cool. So hopefully, this video has helped you all out. Obviously, if you are a veteran player, like I said before, or you're just a player that's played a lot of Outpost Rush since it's come out, and you've got some tips that I have missed in this video, help us all out in the community drop them in the comments below and let's share all the love and tips below as well because that'd be amazing if you have enjoyed today's video please do be sure to drop a like on it down below as it really really does help me out if you are new to the channel and you'd like to see more new world content then be sure to hit the subscribe button down below with the notification bell on as i do upload every single day so it would be amazing to have you here as part of the community if you would like to join my community discord we've got a huge thriving community over there now talking about all things new world so the link for that will be in the description and in the comments as always if you'd like to join up there we'd love to have you over there other than that guys as always thank you very much for watching take care and peace